hello, 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 cheerio, pip pip, and all that rot. Welcome, boys and girls, lads and lasses, old friends, and new ones I've yet to meet. This is Studio Live, I'm Faith on a Beat Setley, and we are back with another video. So, as you might have guessed from the thumbnail, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, and my computer actually starts working properly, um... There's more than one painting in this video. So do stick around and I will be showing you what I'm doing to start a commission as well as this. So I took a poll, asked a bunch of people, would you like to see me 3D up a shark tooth? And like it came back like an outstanding yes. So okay. Um this is said shark tooth. This is um like a prehistoric shark tooth from a megalodon from back in the day before the day actually and we're going to be putting it in a box. Where's the box? This is the box. Now it looks kind of flat doesn't it? That's because we've not done much to it at the minute. So they were pretty big teeth. I don't think I'd want to get chomped with those things. Thank you very much. The first thing what we did, or what I did, is I measured off the edges to the box. And I did that in pencil, posted it to me wall. And I do apologize, my voice is not great. It's really, really hot in here. I've got a bottle of water to the side. Um, and the next thing I did, was go over that with permanent marker. Now there's some really cool tricks with this that I'm going to show you guys in another video. Um, I showed one of my students and she was quite surprised by it. Um, but it's really really cool. Not in this video but in another video. So went over that with marker and now we're going to flip this and we're going to wire it. I don't believe, I don't think I've ever showed you guys a video on how I wire a painting. Um, my suggestion is, if you've got something with a lot of detail that you don't want all smushed, spray it before you flip it. Um, unless you've got something that will not benefit by spraying like a human portrait. I never spray human portraits because... The paint I use, I kind of like the pencil lines to sort of evolve and blend in with the paint that I'm using so that the laugh lines, things like that, look quite more, like, a lot more natural, quite more natural. Yeah, my British gets in the way of my English sometimes. Um, <laughs> so, if you've got, like, a landscape or something with a humongous amount of detail that you don't want smeared, spray it before you flip it. Um, this does not have a lot of detail, so I'm not worried about it. Um, any little bits, it, well, it's not going to be on here long enough to do any mucking about. So what we're going to do, comes back to the marker, isn't it? It's a sharpie, it's a fine point, it's a black marker, and what do we need with it? We need a ruler. Now depending on the size of the painting, Sometimes I measure down four inches, sometimes I measure down three inches. Um, really, 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 really small paintings. I've even been known to do one inch or two inch. But, take cap off the marker would help. Now, on this one I'm only going to do three, because it's a small painting and it's fairly light. Now, I try and get this. Uh, can you even see what I'm on about? Hello. It's difficult to get the camera in range. So I'm going to try and get somewhere in the middle. Actually make sure I've got this. Come on dude. Oh, do not move about. And I'm just going to do a little mark. Like so. See it's not on the wood because there's, there's not a lot of wood. If you tried to put that, um, the eyelet, into the wood it might crack the wood don't do that try and get it in the middle 
so that you've got a bit of gription. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> um, is now um, on the canvas as well as on the wood. So we've got one there. Can you see me? And measuring down from the top. I always get nervous when I do these videos. I don't know why. Okay. Oops. I hope if you actually mark the canvas instead of... There we go. Three and three. Look at that. So we put the marker back. Phew. I think. And now... Time for... I'm all tangled up in my wires. Little eyelet. Little hammer. I've had some people make fun of this hammer on me. I call it a bit of a girly hammer. I do have a butch hammer around here someplace, but for this, I don't really need it. And you might notice my thumbs. My thumbnails aren't that great yet. Um, Oops. You only want to get it in there. Would you like to cooperate with me a little? There we go. Okay. And then you screw it almost all the way down. Can you actually even see what I'm on about? There we go. You can see me now. Almost all the way. There we go. Now, where's the other eyelet? Here we go. Check the camera. And bump, bump, bump. I wired a painting earlier and literally had to go back and like hammer a nail in and then come back, yank it out and put the eyelet in. Because it's been a little bit on the stubborn side. Okay, hopefully I can actually upload this. Because between my computer and my phone. They're not playing nice. Okay, so we've got one eyelet, two eyelet. So now, what I do, I use a fine wire unless it's like a heavy duty painting. Like for me, there's no point in using like a, some sort of monstrous wire because there's no sense in it really. And we've got a bit of a snag, so just bear with me. Which has turned into a slinky. <laughs> oh, they're gonna love that if he comes around the corner. Do, 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 do. Got ya, you little gremlin. There we go. Okie dokie. Now, wire! <laughs> Move my hammer to the side. I bring it through from the outside to the inside of this. Now, when you're wiring a painting, you don't want the wire to go up here because that's just really comp or cheesy, as some people would say. Um, nobody wants the wire showing. So, I'm just going to keep it down here, if possible. I'm going to squeeze the wire together. Now, for me, this is the art part, because... Sometimes it cooperates, sometimes it doesn't. You take your hammer, you put it to the outside of the eyelet, 
and you shove it. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> shove it down. Almost flat. There we go. What's that do? How many times have you seen a painting that, that juts out from the wall? Because the eyelets aren't hammered down. I've seen a few. I haven't seen a lot, but I've seen a few. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and twist it. And I'm sending my sign absolutely packing. And I'm going to twist it. Make a little wire braid type deal. Okay. And then that will go round and about up here. Now I'm going to measure off a little bit. Take some scissors. Or as my mum used to call them, scissors. Don't know why. Slinky time. Okay. Not going to bed yet. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take the wire from the outside. Bring it in. Like so. Keep this where it's supposed to be. Pinch. Come here, darling. Pinch that off. Come on. There we go. Now, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to very carefully flip this. So that I can get my hammer on the outside of the eyelet. And we're going to push. Sometimes it's a little stubborn. Depends how far it's gone into the wood. Oh. Come on. Come on. There we go. That looked professional. <laughs> Okay, so again, we're going to go back and we're going to twist all this up. And don't worry if your wire is too long. You can actually cut it or you can um, leave it like I do sometimes and it will strengthen what you're hanging up. So, if my hands are shaky, it's A, because I'm a little bit nervous. Yes, I said novice. And um, as well, you know, over the course of the last year, as a lot of people know about me, um, I've been doing battle with a few health issues, but I'm here. And that's all that counts. And everything's good. Come here, darling. Get your nose out. Now, there we go, a little bit too much, even for a double, and I can take my clippers, my pliers, whatever, later on and just pinch that complete. So now we're going to flip it around, crumb. And see, I didn't want to um, do that. Um, prior to um, prior to all the um, stuff we're going to do on the front of it, I uh, lost my train of thought for a minute. I'm not having a good day because. Once we start on the front um, and flip it over, it's going to schmuck everything. So, what is in this? Like, literally, what is in this? Looks like a um, wet worm, doesn't it? And we're going to be using the marker again. So, basically... This is modeling clay in this little shot glass full of water. This is modeling clay. This is air dry modeling clay. 
and this is the company that I use DAS and somewhere on this packet and I had this yeah here we go if I can get this right here I don't know if you can like, see that it says air hardening DAS modeling clay air hardening and it's white and I put it near because the packets do not seal back up properly like they don't seal back up at all actually for me they don't anyway so we have a bit of clay in a shot glass full of water let's see if I can get down here so you can actually see this okay and what we're going to do Take a little bit off of that because it's a wee mite on the fat side. We are going to, can you see me? We're literally going to put this on the top to start building a box. And if it goes over onto this right now, it's okay. Cause in special effects work, we always build in layers. We're gonna mold it over to the side a little bit. And we want it really wet so that it's uniform and gets a chance to dry. And any edges you can sort of just press out a little bit with your nail. Over the edge we go, woohoo. I think another reason I was sort of um, out of it for a minute there was because Logan's been really, really hyper lately and um, trying to keep an eye on where he is and what he's on about while I'm doing this. He doesn't seem to like when I do videos. I don't know if it's the radio frequency or what's going on with it, but it just tends to bother him a little bit. Now, we're going to be doing something different along the side. We're not going to be using modeling clay. And why you might ask? Because we're only want we're only wanting to build up the top. Boxes aren't built out this oops bump the camera. Boxes aren't built out the side. They're built up, which creates height, which also creates depth. But this is a small box, so we really don't want to um, make it too high. So we might, I don't know yet, we might have to put another layer on here. And we'll just smooth that out. There we go. Smooth, 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 smooth. I hope you can see what I'm doing because um, there's minutes where I'm not looking at the camera and it's like, okay, am I still even in shot? Now, I know you're going to be thinking to yourself, why? 
How is it possible to use modeling clay on a canvas? You can use anything on a canvas, really. I mean, something shouldn't be used, but you can technically use anything. And again, if it gets messy in here, that can be scraped off later on carefully, very carefully, because we want to do something else with this later on. Can't do it if there's like holes in it. Give it one more little bump here. Hopefully you can see what I'm on about. Okay, we've started our box. Now, there's something else I want to do as well. Just move this back over here because it seems to be shambling away on me. Now, what we'll say about markers is that sometimes they create more depth than paint. Um, for example, if you want to mark off a dog's nostrils in a painting and you find yourself like doing a big black blob where the, the nose is and your, the nostrils disappear on you, take your marker before you do the paint on the nose and just go over where the nostrils are. Um, they will come out a slightly blackish reddish hue and will um, give you something to to find once you get the rest of the paint on it. So what I want to do with the shark tooth is create a little bit in a couple of spots, three spots, a uh, little bit of depth and we're just going to do... I won't do the whole thing at the minute. Check to make sure you can even see me. And then down here as well. And round the edge because I don't know if any of you have like seen a megalodon tooth but the edges of like the, the tooth itself curve down a little bit when it's lying in a certain position And boy, does this marker stink. Woo! Oh, 
also shark teeth, especially um, the Megalodon, the Great White. There's a few other species, but they're serrated, and I'm literally being my own worst enemy over here. This me and you can tell I've not done a video for proper ages, haven't you? Um. There we go, that's better. Ta da! As Wally so eloquently puts it. Um, I'm only doing that half. So we've got. Over here, we've got the start of the box. And. We want to bring this up a little bit. It's going to be sort of like um, a little bigger than a jewelry box. So that it looks like you can just reach in and scoop round the tooth, pick it up. Uh, that's what we're open for. So this has got to dry. And then I can finish going round the edge. See if I need a second layer or not before I come back in and show you what I'm going to be doing on the sides of this thing. So this is a shark tooth um, painting. Now, let's see what I'm doing with the commission. It's going to be something really simple because I've spent so much time on this. Um, I'm going to be using something different. I'm going to be covering up my sign. And I'm going to watch what I'm doing because I'm going to have water, water everywhere. Bye bye. Um, okay. Commission time! Something really, really simple. Uh, I'm going to be finger painting. I'll do that a lot. And we're going to be using golden moulding paste on this. Now, I was initially going to do the same thing that I just did with the shark painting. And use the clay to go around. And we're making a frame on this one. But then I sat back and looked at it and I went, yeah. You know, there's like so much intricate detail. I think I'm going to do this a little differently. And I just had to check the cat. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. This is golden molding paste again. And I love this stuff. I hate this stuff. Because it's rather expensive. It's like 20 some bucks depending where you get it. Um, I have seen it for as little as 15. Again, depending where you get it. Um, but the bad bit about this is, obviously you've got to take the lid off when you're working with it, right? <laughs> well, um, it just starts to dry out even as you're working with it. Is If there was a way that you could actually keep said lid on and still get it out the pocket, that'd be great, but you can't. So... I'm going to scoop in with my finger. Ta-da! Now, where can I go where you can actually see what I am doing? Bring this down just a little bit. And check my camera. And we're just going to do... I'm going to do it on a simple bit because I'm at like practically 30 minutes already. And I've got a wee bit of black coming off from the pencil, but you know what? It's all good because this is going to be painted anyway. And we scoop. Finger painting, special effects painting. It gets messy. And again, I might have to do a couple of layers on this. Because I do, I want it to stand up a little bit, but I want it to be smooth. And again, I hate my voice today. I'm really, really sorry about that. Now I'm trusting, I'm going to move this over just a smidge. And I've got a bottle over here, so I'm going to do a shift about. There we go. 
I'm only gonna go to here, because like I said, I'm at almost at 30 minutes already, oh my goodness. And it's gonna take forever to upload. I'm not doing the ribbon. <clears throat> Sorry. Voice, left the building with Elvis. It's so hot in here. So I'm just going to do to where the ribbon is, like so. And I'm trusting that you can see how smooth this is. Thank you, my voice is coming back. Um, no. Don't be a good baby, you little rodent. Logan wants to come and see what Mom's on about, and it's like, nope. Uh, okay. So I'll do a little bit down here as well, I suppose. Molding paste is um, until you get a bunch of layers on here. It's rather translucent. Like, you can see that the pencil line is still there. And I will definitely have to go over all this lot again. And this will make a frame. And then we're going to have a ribbon. And there's a little plaque on the bottom. And a rose up top. So that's going to be quite interesting. I'm really apologizing for my voice today. And I'm hoping that you can basically see the difference in what I've done. See, this lock gets really, really messy. Um, hopefully you can actually see the difference in what I'm on about. So, hopefully this uploads. Hopefully next time I come back, my voice will actually be with me. And um, I will have a lot more to show you. So, take care. Have a great day. And we'll chat soon. Um, <laughs> I don't have a hand to do this. <laughs> Whatever. Bye-bye. Love you.